sports has been a staple to every culture and civilization in our history. Chess has its origins in ancient India. The Olympics were organized by the Greeks to appease the gods. And gladiators fought each other in Rome, just because Romans loved the sight of athleticism and bloodshed together. But gladiators were not the only ones going extreme with their sports activities at the time. Today on Nutty History, we're exploring the deadliest sports in history. Venetio was a special gladiator event where human gladiators were pit against lions, leopards, tigers, bears, and other wildebeests in the Colosseum. The animals were left to starve in cages before the event to make them extra ruthless and desperate, you know, just to make the interspecies battle more ferocious. It's hard to tell whether Venetio was more of a sport or a punishment because the more you look into it, the more it sucked for everyone who participated. At least the audience had a good time, which kind of makes you question their judgment. In the name of this sport, Romans committed every possible animal cruelty you could imagine. According to a historic account, Titus claimed that on a single day, over 10,000 gladiators were fighting more than 5,000 beasts. Those numbers might seem hard to believe, but the sport of Venetio does bear some responsibility for the extinction of many species in Europe. Big oof, those poor doggos and kitties. But people love the sight of bloodshed, no matter if it was a triumph for gladiators or the beast tearing them limb to limb out of anger and hunger. Hmm, if only they had a Snickers back then. You know you're not you when you're hungry. Bloodthirsty Death Lion, have a Snickers. Jousting is considered a noble sport, a more civilized version of gladiator fights, where knights would ride their horses toward each other, aiming to knock the other person down with their tall lances, which clearly seems to be compensating for something. Though we believe that jousting was a medieval sport, ancient Egypt had made it cool thousands of years ago. Just to make it more exciting, Egyptians used to joust in the River Nile. They rode boats instead of horses and used their oars to knock the opponent out. Oh, how fun! You just safely fall into water instead of rocky ground? Well, no, you're wrong, and the river's filled with crocodiles. As the sport of fishermen jousting was played in the open river, crocodiles would flock around the boats and pounce on any unfortunate soul who would lose the game. So according to crocodiles, fun? Yes, because of free food. Safe? Eh, not so much. Buskeshi is a game played in the region of Afghanistan, which is basically polo, however, with one twist. Instead of a ball, the two teams compete for a carcass of a goat. This centuries-old game of animal cruelty not only still exists, but is considered the national game of Afghanistan. Buskeshi is a fast-paced game where players have to pass the goat around among the team and throw it into a giant hole. As goats can weigh up to 90 pounds, this is not an easy or safe feat. Many players, even the experienced ones, have fallen off their horses while carrying the goat or while trying to grab it. Even if you survive, there is a high chance you will break a major bone or two in a fall or get some permanent damage. However, if your team wins, you get to roast the goat and feast on it. Talk about playing with your food. Bull leaping existed long before bullfighting, and it was exactly how you might be imagining it. A bull charges at you, and you try to leap over its horns to the other side. Obviously, there was always a chance of being rammed by a bull or getting stabbed by its horns in your no-no place, because one's legs would be split over its head in the attempt. Bet you felt that on the other side of the screen, didn't you? If you're thinking, who would find this sport fascinating? You have to know that bull leaping was invented in the 13th century BC, when there wasn't a lot around to do. The sport originated in ancient Indus Valley civilization and somehow made its way to Minoans, the precursors of ancient Greeks. Yep, the same kingdom that is known today for the Minotaur. Interestingly, both Minoans and Indus Valley civilizations worshipped the bulls back in their time. Ulama isn't so unknown to the modern world, thanks to the movie El Dorado. An ancient counterpart to basketball, the game required some serious coordination and hips that can compete with Shakira because you needed your hips to control, pass, or shoot the ball instead of limbs. This was also perhaps the first game recorded in history to use a rubber ball. Still, you had to have a lot of strength and dexterity to shoot the ball in hoops with your haunches. Ulama is the only sport on this list which involved no bloodshed during the gameplay. That came after. Just like a lot of other things in Maya civilization, this game too was often associated with human sacrifice. During a certain era of the Mayan civilization, the captain of the losing team would be sacrificed to appease the gods. Those are the highest stakes I've ever heard in a sport. Am I right? What about you? Which of these games do you think you could compete in? 
Any other ancient sports worth putting on the list? Tell us in the comments down below. And thanks for watching Nutty History.